Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie here. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. Before we get started today, please go ahead and make sure you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed already, what is you doing? Please go ahead and just hit that notification bell so you can be notified every single time a new video drops. It would also really help your girl out if you would give me a like and also share my channel, my videos, my content with all of your natural hair friends. I would really love you forever. All right, so now that that's out of the way, I wanna talk to you guys today about some curly hair do's and don'ts. I feel like at this stage I have like a specific little curly hair philosophy for my hair. So there's certain things that I do and certain things that I don't do in order to keep my curl game on fleek. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I really feel like these things have been a game changer for my curls. So yeah, let's jump straight on in. All right, so I think I'm gonna start with the do's. I have five do's and five don'ts, so let's go right ahead. So number one, do detangle your hair while it's wet. Curly hair does not like to be detangled when it's dry. Now this is actually a funny one for me because this is probably the reason why I relaxed my hair ages ago in the first place. My mom would comb my hair and you know, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the yanking and the crying and the cussing and the slapping and the, the combing out the hair when it's dry is just not the, not the move that is one thing that I 100% definitely do not do for my curls it's just impossible I mean when your curls are dry it's I don't know it's just they're curly they're all curled up and together and lovey and huggy with each other and they don't want to be separated or detangled when your hair is wet it has a lot more slip and it just makes life a lot easier. So for me personally, I detangle once or twice a week. Every time I wash my hair, I go ahead and detangle. Even though it's easier to detangle when it's wet, it's technically at its most vulnerable state when it's wet. So you still wanna make sure that you take time and care when you're detangling it, but definitely don't try it dry. Like just, just don't do it. The second thing that I always make sure that I do is check the ingredients list on the back of the products that I use. I am huge, huge, huge on ingredients. Brands nowadays are really crafty when it comes to marketing. They can put all natural and blah, 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 and they can put whatever they want on the packaging and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So what I like to do is always check the ingredients list on the back of the product. Now that can be kind of intimidating a little bit sometimes because they're huge words and you're kind of just like, mm, okay, it's there, but I don't know what I'm looking at. So I'm just gonna tell you a super simple way to be able to tell what's good and what's not good. So the first thing to know about ingredients list is that it's listed in order of like amount of ingredient that's in the product. So for example, if you see water or like oil as one of the first ingredients, that means there's a huge content of that in the product. So it's mostly made out of water or oil. And then without getting too technical, you're basically gonna wanna stay away from your parabens, your sulfates, your silicones especially, and alcohol as well. So if there's a paraben, usually you can kind of see the word paraben somewhere. There's different types of parabens, but usually it'll have like the word paraben within that word, if it's paraben. Sulfates and silicones, same kind of thing. You'll kind of see the word there or it'll sound really close to it. And in terms of alcohol, there are multiple different types of alcohol. There's some alcohols that are more drying and then there's some alcohols that actually help to add more moisture and hydration into the hair. So the drying alcohols that you're gonna wanna stay away from, they sound scary, right? So there's like ethanol, there's propanol, propyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, so they all kinda sound a little similar. So if you see a product that's got like a little bit of propyl alcohol something, isopropyl, propanol, like they all denatured alcohol, all of those, you're gonna wanna stay away from. The other ones that are pretty good for hydration are Laurel alcohol, settle alcohol, sterile alcohol, ben, benil, benil alcohol. Um, so yeah, right there you can kind of hear the difference in how the word sounds. So all the propyls, propanols, denatured, bad. The laurels and the, what is it called? Benils, setterils, sterils, those are good. 
This does not need to be a whole like, oh, I gotta Google every time I wanna use one product because ain't nobody got time for that. But if you just note to yourself the four things, paraben, sulfates, silicones, and then alcohols, then you'll, you'll be fine. And then if you just get to know which alcohols are the safe ones or get to know which ones aren't the safe ones, then you can just quickly scan and say, oh, I don't see that one, this is a good product for me. Or, oh, this one has that bad alcohol in there, let me not use it, you know what I mean? It really does not need to get all technical and time consuming, I promise. Whew. All right, that was a long one. So my third do for curly hair is gonna be just to plain and simple listen to your hair. I promise you, your hair will tell you what it likes and what it doesn't like. Your hair is gonna react differently to a bad product than it will to a good product. So if you're finding that your hair is like not doing well, it's looking a little frizzy, it's not lasting throughout the week, there's some part of your routine or there's some product that you're using that is just not working for your hair. And this actually ties in really well with my number four do, which is to show your hair lots of love and commitment. You just gotta give your hair some TLC. Your weekly treatments, your regular trims, like you gotta just commit to taking care of your hair. Again, I don't want it to sound all intimidating, like, ugh, like, honestly, after a while, it just becomes a part of your routine. If having healthy curls is something that's important to you, you kinda just, it just becomes part of your lifestyle. And again, like I always love to say, when you show your hair love, it'll show it right back and you'll end up being so happy. Happy curls, happy girl. All right, and then for my fifth and final do, you should make sure to find a hairstylist that you trust. That has also been a huge game changer because if you ever feel lost, if you are just frustrated with your hair and not sure what to do, your hairstylist should be able to always guide you in the right direction. I personally trust Diva Curl hairstylists just because I know that they're certified, they're held up to a certain like standard, you know, they've gone through the schooling and all of that. I just, I don't know, I trust that. And I love, love, love the fact that they're pretty much all over the place. You can go on the Diva Curl website and just type in your zip code and you can find the nearest Diva Curl hairstylist that's in your area. They just make it really easy and I've never had an issue with a Diva Curl hairstylist yet. I've been to three different hairstylists, yes. And I love them all. They're just so knowledgeable. It's just nice to have that person who's always there for you. And if it's somebody that you consistently go to, they'll then learn your hair and it just becomes like a match made in heaven, you know? Like a great friendship. All right, now on to the don'ts. So my first don't is going to be don't use shampoo. Oh, I know I'm gonna get some comments on this one, but that is just something that has worked for me. I have only used shampoo, I maybe slipped up like two or three times within my like, how long has it been? One and a half year of being natural. So the founder of Diva Curl, Lorraine Massey, she wrote a whole Diva Curl book. And it's not specifically for Diva Curl, but it's like a hair care book. And that was, one of my best friends bought it for me when I went natural. Shout out to you, Haley. But it is an amazing book. It just goes through a lot, like the scientific side of curly hair so you can better understand like what may or may not work better for your curls etc etc so in that book as you guys also know with diva curl they are hugely against shampoo without getting too technical when the shampoo suds up in your curls apparently it's this kind of sudsy stuff that just stays behind in your hair and it causes it to really just dry out your curls like on another level and it is really really hard almost near impossible to be able to fully wash out that shampoo and so when you're continuously every week every week just applying more and more shampoo you're just drying out your hair and leaving all of those like sudsy things in in your hair and then it's just like not a good situation at all if you're interested in reading a little bit more about that i'm sure there's stuff on google and also i will link the book below that's where i learned all of this stuff and that's where i made my commitment to no shampoo but just speaking from personal experience the no shampoo has done amazing and now obviously i of, of course i cleanse my hair on a weekly basis i will use conditioning cleansers and then every once in a while, like once a month or every two weeks, I will do a deeper cleanse. I like to use the Build-Up Buster by Diva Curl. It uses micellar water technology and 
just really, really gives your curls like a super deep cleanse. That's it, done, on to the next one. All right, so my second don't is don't obsess over hair typing. Don't obsess over hair typing. Don't obsess over hair typing. I can't, like I can't say this enough, honestly. So many people get caught up in like, oh, what's my hair type? Like, I don't know, like I can't do anything without knowing my hair type. And I think hair typing is straight up foolishness. I do not believe in it. I feel like curls are so unique. Everybody's curls, like no two girls have the same curls. Twins, family or not, like nobody has the same curls. That is just how beautiful and unique curly hair is. And I feel like hair typing just does not work. We also all have so many different types of curls. Like I know the curls in my front are different from the curls in the middle, which are different from the curls in the back. Like we just, there's just, there's too much, we can't, curls cannot be boxed in, okay? We are too wild and out there to be put in a box. I honestly, please, just don't like overly obsess about it. I just don't believe in it and I don't think it's worth stressing over. All right, number three, don't compare your hair to anybody else's hair or don't compare your natural hair journey to someone else's natural hair journey. This is again, just gonna stress you out some more. You're gonna wonder like, oh, why don't my curls look like hers? Or why doesn't my hair grow as fast as hers? You're gonna get caught up in this thing of just always wanting to just compare yourself with other people and you're never ever ever gonna end up satisfied because it's just simply not your hair. Like I said earlier, just listen to your hair. It'll tell you what it likes, what it doesn't like, and eventually you will find the right products, the right routine that fits perfectly for you, and you'll be happy with yourself. Just try not to stress yourself out by comparing yourself to other people. And I feel like that goes with all facets of life, with how you look, with fitness, with you know your weight, like everything, don't do it. Don't get caught up in that. Worry about you, and that's it. All right, for my fourth don't, which I feel like I should have probably said is number one, don't use heat. Don't at me. Heat is very, very, very damaging for curly hair. I, like, even for a length check, I'm just completely against heat. But that's just me. Some people like the occasional, you know, Maybe that's not so bad. Me personally, I have made a complete commitment against heat. All when I went go get my box braids, like I told them do not blow dry my hair. Just do it like this and it'll be fine and they didn't blow dry my hair. I just, I'm against it because I know how picky and sensitive curly hair can be. And my top priority is always to just keep these curls bouncy and happy and healthy. The one type of heat that I use is diffusing. So usually when I'm washing my hair, I hate to go out looking like a wet dog. So I do diffuse my curls, but that is like a different type of heat. That is gets diffused through the thing and it's just some fancy way that it works and it's not the same as putting a straight up blow dryer on your hair. The type of heat that I'm telling you not to use is the type of heat that will straighten your hair. It's just not good. It's just not good. All right, and then my fifth and final don't is don't use protective styles or tight hairstyles too often. Okay, protective styles can be amazing. Don't get me wrong. They can really, really help to protect your curls for a set amount of time and just, you know, allow it to just grow a little bit quicker. Um, but you don't want to get into a habit of using protective styles all the time. It's really, really, really important to get your hair to breathe. It needs to breathe. It needs to be out and wild and free. It's really just important for oxygen to get to your hair. After a while, it gets dry and it's going to need additional products. You don't want to go like protective styling forever because then your curls are just not even going to get the chance to flourish. You need to give them that chance. You need to give them the love, those weekly treatments, you know, and I promise in due time, they will start to love you back. The same thing goes for tight hairstyles, you know, slicking your hair back or tight hoofs up. I try really hard not to do those often or if I'm gonna do like a high poof, I'll try to make it a lot looser so the, the crown of my hair is not gonna be like pulled up. Um, so yeah, again, it's just all about that TLC, that, you know, making your hair priority. All right, and that is my hair philosophy. Honestly, I feel like these are the things that are keeping my hair as healthy as it is. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of my hair, 
and I really take like huge pride in just taking care of it and watching it just love me back. We got a good relationship, right? I really hope this was super helpful for some of you. These genuinely are what I live and die by. I really, really believe that this is what is helping my hair to just stay healthy and happy. If you guys know anyone on their natural hair journey, beginning, middle, end, who you think might find this video useful, please go ahead and share it with them. Also, if you enjoy this, don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up. And also, you were supposed to subscribe in the beginning. If you didn't, please go ahead and hit that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.